This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Hudson is going to interview Jeff Jarrett about his title title shot later. Styles is going to attack Jarrett. They have a brief pull apart brawl. Hudson then interviews the NWA world champ, Ron Killings, along with Conan and BG James, who all complain about the odds being stacked against them. And now we get to our main event. It goes 20 minutes and 23 seconds. And of course, what, you know, it that damn double J Jeff Jarrett wins again. Meltzer would say he won the King of the Hill reverse ladder match over the incumbent Ron Killings and Chris Harris and Raven and AJ Styles to capture the NWA World Heavyweight title at 20 minutes and 23 seconds. Quote, very good gimmick concept match. In another innovative gimmick match introduced by TNA, Jeff Jarrett regained the World Heavyweight title for the third time in the King of the Mountain match. He won by climbing a ladder and hanging the NWA title belt on a hook above the ring. Before the incumbent champ, Ron Killings and top contenders, James Storm, AJ Styles, and Raven. He hit Killings with the guitar just before making the winning climb. The other key stipulation was that anytime someone was pinned, they had to spend two minutes in a penalty box, which was a small cage at ringside. At, at times, more than one wrestler was in the penalty box. Sometimes they'd have a mini cage brawl. Other times they call a truce to rest. Jarrett had previously held the title from November 20th, 02 to June 11th, 2003. And then again, from October 22nd, 03 to April 21st, uh, 2004 here. So from the observer, they're going to say that, uh, you win the title a week before the first TV taping. And of course he had predicted that. What'd you think of, of the way this all came together and the execution of the match? You know, Conrad, as last night and then earlier when you were asking me to explain, I forgot to think of this analogy that, again, internally, uh, folks, eight years later, 2011, 2012, you know, they're like, ah, we don't even understand it. And I would say, hey, you ever been to a hockey game? Oh, yeah. Do you like it? Oh, love hockey. Absolutely. Do you understand all the rules? Well, hell no. Do you know what the blue line, you know, what icing is, you know, what's a penalty, what's not a penalty, all that. And I'm just like, so just kind of let it breathe. Look, don't offer overcomplicated. Some folks will continue to nitpick and I get it. I respect that. But the, the people I knew after this match, Conrad, that, and I have often thought, is there a way that we can kind of tweak it to kind of let the air out of, oh, there's too many rules. I don't understand that. But these very first King of the Mountain match, and I'm going to abyss, I hate to do this, but you talk about a guy that can lay out a match like this, like a lethal lockdown. This is why he's where he's at today. He can think things through from an announcer's point of view, from a talent's point of view, from a fan's point of view, he, and, and structurally put things together and piece it together and timing and all that. And I remember us getting together and knowing that when a pinfall happens, that guy's got to go into the penalty box. So let's take that into account and, and, and who's in there together or if they're in there together. But I was very, very happy with the first one. Uh, now look, not all of them can be perfect, but we had several in Orlando that the timing was right. Everything clicked. The people understood the drama. When you got right down to the end, one talent would climb to the top. He would go off and there'd be a crash and burn. Another guy would, the baby face would get pinned and he'd be put into the uh, penalty box. And then the heel or two heels would be left out and they'd be climbing. So you could create a lot of drama out of this match if it's executed properly. So I, I remember this one, I re really be, I remember being really happy uh, after we finished it. One of the things I wanted to mention is uh, this note from the observer. They had to approach the FSN deal, whether this is a valid premise or not, that they are mainly introducing a product to a new audience. While a lot of people, and rightfully so, consider this the Jeff Jarrett vanity promotion, he was the best guy to go into the new television as champion. They also needed to pick one baby face, whether it be Harris or Styles, who is clear to be the guy getting the push and build a fairly decent lengthy program chasing it and getting it because long-term Jarrett can't be the guy. It should also be noted that those in the booking process have noted that Jarrett was insistent upon being champ when the TV started and an inordinate amount of time in the booking meetings is spent planning his angles. So who's leaking that stuff? Who's, who's the stooge?
through the years, I mean, you can almost pull the lens back and kind of know, but in order, so I'm just trying to think who was in the rooms. Uh, look, it's no secret that Mike Tanay and Meltzer have had a, a, a 40 year friendship at this time, but Mike wasn't in the rooms. I, I don't know. Vince Dutch, JB, you know, I, I can't, I couldn't put my finger on any one thing, but God forbid you give the most time and attention to detail on the champions, uh, program, <laughs> but again, good, good newsletter writing. I get it. Uh, I openly, uh, we'll, we'll have that discussion, but good question, Conrad. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice any time we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.